Hello, I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive, and in today's video, it's going to be all about the new Milwaukee Tools right angle impact wrench. This is the 3H drive model. So this video is going to be a little bit different than your typical review video where I just go over some specs and show you a few things. What I want to do is put it to work in all kinds of automotive applications to determine if this is the right tool for you to even purchase. And as I'm going over it and putting it to use, I'll tell you some of the specs on it, show you what I think about it. You know, maybe a different tool would work better in this situation, or maybe this is the perfect tool for this situation, and so on. So stay tuned for that. So I put the right angle impact to work tearing down this radiator core support here. So you can control the power levels. The fastest level, what I have it set in now, is at 3,000 RPMs. And that's where I like to use it the most because it has a variable trigger. So I can vary the, the power level with just the trigger. So that I thought that was nice. Or you can switch the power level by pushing the button on top of it. So the tool comes in right around three pounds, and when you're using it like this, you can feel that weight on your wrist. It's not too bad, but you can feel it. But I did I like how it made quick work of this task. So Milwaukee claims that it has 220 foot-pounds of nut-breaking torque and 200 pounds of tightening torque. So this impact wrench features the standard fuel gauge that all the Milwaukee tools have. It has a, a switch here that you can switch the power levels and a variable trigger. Uh, you can get this tool in bare tool, or you can get it in kit form, which comes with two batteries, a charger, and the tool. It also comes with a carrying case, and it works with all the M12 Milwaukee battery lines. So I was excited to try it out on suspension work here. So I got a full battery here, a 14 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna take these brake caliper bolts off. And these 14 millimeter bolts here, it had no problem ripping these off. So when I went to use it on the caliper cage bracket here, these are 17 millimeter. I'm using the extension here, it would not take it off. So I took the extension off and tried it on the lower bolt and it would not take that bolt off either. Now I did have to switch over to a, a 1100 foot pound impact gun to get those bolts off. They were locked tight in on. Here I am using it right here to remove the rotor that was stuck onto the hub using a, a bolt to draw or pull the rotor off of it. And it did that with ease. So on this next vehicle, the steering wheel was locked in the lock position, so I couldn't turn the wheel without lowering the car back down. So I tried to use my stubby impact here, and it would not fit in here to remove it. So this is where the uh, right angle it comes in handy. It's a lot smaller than the, even the stubby impact here. And you can get it right in there and uh, rip those bolts off. So those, that really small compact size comes in handy in this situation. So like I said, it has four power modes here to select from. Uh, you can really control the RPMs. So I'm using a, um, a, some fine bolts here where I don't want to put a lot of torque on it. So I lowered it down to the lowest setting and I was able to run those bolts down without over torquing or breaking any bolts or doing any damage. So that control is really nice. The fourth level or fourth position is for reverse mode. So what it does is it takes a fastener off at full power and as soon as it senses that it's loosened, it slows the RPMs down so you don't sling like wobbly sockets and stuff. So on most brake caliper bolts, they're right here in the wide open and you, this tool will fit in just about all of them and take them out. But the cages are a little different. They're a little closer to the suspension and it would not fit in this application here. I, I didn't feel comfortable pull, pulling the trick on it might because it would strip the bolt. So I had to switch over to a regular ratchet. And that's another point I wanted to point it out is this tool you cannot use as a regular ratchet to break a fastener free. It will just spin as freewheeling. So if you're using the ratchet like this where it's fitting in this tight area now much better than that previous tool. I can also, if it's too tight for the ratchet, I can push it and crack it free by hand. You cannot do that with the uh, right angle impact. So what I've found with this tool is it works really well on small fasteners where the head is 14 millimeters and below. Anything above that, it starts to struggle a little bit. But if you're doing a teardown where you're using a lot of small fasteners, it's a great tool for that application. Here I'm using in a, in a trunk here to loosen up the, uh, the, the striker here, or the catch you know, for the latch here, and it, it made quick work of that. So in this case here, I'm using it to remove some small bracket bolts here, and they're kind of recessed down in there, and I had it set on the full power here, and when I did, it slung the bolt off. So on the next bolt over, I switched it down to the mode four. So you put it in mode four, and as soon as you pull the trigger, it breaks that bolt free, but then slows the RPMs down. That way you don't sling the fastener. I thought that's a pretty cool feature. 
So overall, the tool does have a, quite a bit of power. It just doesn't like the larger uh, fastener. It had no problem removing these 9 16 bolts from this starter off this 1968 Buick GS400. And it was able to rip the uh, flex plate bolts here off. And these were Loctited on. And it took all of these bolts off with no problem. Now it made quick work of removing the uh, the oil pan bolts here on this Buick. Uh, I was dropping it down to uh, change out the rear main seal on it. And it made quick work and it was small enough to get into a pretty tight areas here to remove these fasteners. And I think it was a lot faster using this tool over using a ratchet. So on this vehicle, I was trying to remove the bolt from the alternator on the, the lower bolt here, and I could not get the, uh, the right angle in there. But I was able to get the 3 8 drive Milwaukee ratchet in there and take that fastener loose or tighten it up. So if this is the perfect tool for you, I will leave links for it down in the description. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.